Talladega week in NASCAR on Prime Sports Network. Thanks for tuning in here for another week of NASCAR and F1 coverage. That's right, F1's back. It's second and only of two races in April, but a lot of traveling, I guess, <laughs> between Japan and China. Or maybe it's just getting everybody, you know, I don't know what, what it would be like traveling to those two countries right now, but... Uh, especially China can't be very easy so um, but anyway how's it going CJ Radun it's going well I can vouch for traveling in Japan is pretty easy I'm not sure about China though I was, <laughs> I was yeah. in Japan not too long ago oh uh, yeah? yeah relatively short um, distance for them rather than going all the way back to Europe and it'll be the first time they've been back to China since 2019 so it should be very interesting what were you doing in Japan I was running a marathon, of course. So of course. Never <laughs> travel for. Yes. Forgot Good about time. that. Okay. Very cool. Uh, I'm sure the viewers would like to know how'd you do. Uh, it was a redemption story from the time from Boston. So Boston was my slowest at the time. Uh, Tokyo was the last of my majors, uh, and it was pretty much bang on what I was expecting. So um, I'm getting older. I'm getting more beat up. Uh, the body doesn't like 26 plus miles and all the training that has to go into it anymore. So uh, I was happy to get out unscathed and complete my goal. Awesome. And how long ago was that? Uh, less than a year. Not oh, too long. Okay. Cool. So you said, is that it? You don't have many more of these left? That's That was the last one until they add Australia to the, to the Australia. world. Australia. Okay. Yeah. Sydney, I guess. Yeah. Nice. All right, so speaking of racing of another kind, we've got NASCAR to talk about with Talladega Week. Uh, we're going to get into F1 in a little bit. Um, but last week, we had ourselves, uh, you know, I, even though Chase kind of broke some serious trends with the poor qualifying effort and not much better in practice, you know, we did talk about the fact that it's Texas and, um, you know, we look at the trends over the years and you have seen drivers in over, I think it was like 43 races. There were about seven of them that were in the 20s or higher. So statistically speaking, um, it does happen. But throw all the history away. I think I can't even believe that I'm going to say this, but it was actually entertaining and <laughs> It's one of those things where I know the I, I know the cars I know they don't want to go back to Texas and have you know their cars spin out and wreck and who the hell knows who's going to survive, but if that's what you're going to give me for Texas every year, I'm going to take it because it's a lot better than what we've seen before at Texas, where cars can just dominate or you can just it's hard to pass and it's boring. So I was I was entertained. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I was happy to see Elliot win and all that. So yeah, it it, it passed the, uh, the it passed my test as far as uh, entertaining NASCAR, uh, which I was not expecting. Yeah, sixteen cautions will do that for you. Um, it was a long afternoon. I think um, before I get to that, it, it was pretty competitive too because Elliot led thirty nine laps, Reddick thirty seven. Um, there were two other, uh, Hamlin and, um, and Chastain both led in the 30s. The only guy that led more than that was, um, uh, was Larson. And, and he basically doubled the 30-ish the laps led and, and led 77. So it was a pretty competitive race, even with the cautions. But there are two things that I think that drove uh, Elliott to break the trends. And if you, you look at Elliott, the poor qualifying, like you mentioned, he started 24th. But even look at Brad Keselowski. Keselowski started 22nd and, and finished second. Um, two things drove that. Number one, the insane amount of cautions that there were. But then I think the bigger factor really is the new car. It's it's adjustable. So you can make changes to this car. And Ross Chastain has proved it several times. You can make changes to this car in the race and be able to catch up if you get your, your brakes. And with the brakes, as well as the adjustability of the car, You've got people that can come from the back of the field and win these races. So I, I have hopes that these tracks can be a little bit more competitive uh, in the future, as long as they keep this car moving in the right direction. And, you know, Elliot was one who hadn't gotten a hold of this new car yet. 
Uh, he hadn't gotten the hang of it, and he obviously has been figuring it out and finally found his way to victory lane. I found a way to make money off of uh, Scotty Scheffler's uh, dominance at the Masters because I, 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 I did a parlay. I said, you know what? If I'm going to try to make money off of Scheffler, I know he's probably going to win the way he's playing it. And four to one, I just can't bet straight up very much. That I, I put him with seven drivers at NASCAR, and all I had to do is invest two dollars basically on all seven parlays. So let's just say if you said, well, why don't you just keep it straight bet? Well, if I did that, that's fourteen dollars. Fourteen times four is whatever. I would have added an additional fifty bucks or something. Yeah, I don't need to have that. So instead, I I, I did two dollars each on seven drivers, and they were all for about two hundred bucks. And Elliot was one of them. So I made two hundred bucks because Chase Elliott won uh, after uh, Scheffler won the Masters. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, but I have to ask you, uh, did you did you find out why it was so crazy? I mean, is there a reason why we had such uh, so many cautions and so forth? And was it purposeful? No, I don't think it was purposeful. I, I think all the series throughout the weekend at Texas had had trouble. Every single and it was drive, exciting. It was exciting. Every, you know, every series, every almost every interview, uh, the drivers would say it was treacherous. So I'm not sure if it was a combination of the weather, the way that the surface was holding rubber or not the way that the handling was set up. But I think we've heard that pretty consistently at Texas. And I, I think a lot of it has to do actually with the change in the banking in turns one and two, because you have to set the car up differently from opposite ends of, of the track. The banking is steeper in turns three and four, and that's what makes it different than Charlotte. So I think you have to come to this racetrack with a different different style of setup. And some drivers get the hang of that, some drivers don't. And with this new car in particular in the Cup Series, when it starts to slide and get out from you and get a little bit loose it's much more difficult to get that back under control whereas with the old car uh, they could slide them a lot more and still be able to get them back uh, with this new car once they're gone they're, they just step out really quickly and it's very hard to rein them back in so is, is there is is this the beginning of us seeing more of this type of racing at Texas? Don't get, don't get your hopes up Aww, <laughs> come on Maybe, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll still be as competitive as it was this past year because with every time the teams go, they get a new page in their notebook and a lot of learnings. And I think the big teams figure that out faster. They're able to do more within their setup simulators and they'll come with better cars in the future. And that uh, competitive. Oh, great. Yep. Yeah, that's what we want. We want them to get smarter. Terrific. Exactly. All right. Well, I don't know. I hope it's more than just one year, but we'll see. Uh, all right. Uh, so Talladega sets us up nicely. At least we'll have uh, a crazy race as usual. We would expect that. Uh, and all I'm going to say is I always say with these races, can just please give us a, a green flag uh, final lap, please. <laughs> don't make me watch this race for a few hours and have them uh, put the yellow out there. Now, look. I was, uh, you know, normally I would be a little bit like, oh, man, they hit the yellow so quick in the race last uh, on Sunday. But it was like they had so many restarts. And I was like, just and, and of course, I wanted Elliot to win. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, it's just end it. I mean, come on. I mean, how many more restarts can he get? So they went almost 10 laps past the scheduled distance. That's just crazy. Yeah. At 15 miles at that track. <laughs> it's just unreal. Yeah. <laughs> and and it did, it really did look like Denny Hamlin was going to win the race, um, yeah. but then the cautions came and he kind of fell a little bit. Okay, we're getting cautions a lot here. Probably going to get another one, and we did. So not that he deserved a break. He has enough of them this year. So that was kind of cool, and it was really nice to see Chase just take command though. And mm -hmm. I also thought it was interesting when they were choosing the lines because Hamlin wanted the inside, right? I think. I, I think so. And yet, even though Elliot was able to beat him on the outside, and then Elliot decides to take the inside. So, and I don't know why they were taking the inside, but the outside wasn't doing too bad either. So, you know what really did it, though, was that was getting Elliot to get Chastain behind him each time on those restarts because Chastain was doing a great job of pushing Elliot. So I thought that was the key, was having the right guy behind Elliot on those restarts, having Chastain there. Yeah, and I think it was the second to last restart where... Um it was, was it Keselowski and Chastain behind Hamlin and Elliott, but neither, at, at that one, for the first time, 
all day for the first time that second row didn't push either one of them <laughs> and so it was just a straight up fight between hamlin and and elliot so whoever could sail it in the furthest and, and they were even kind they of were. off back straight and then elliot was able to pull it out and hamlin like you said lost control and that's another perfect example once that once that new car starts to step out and it's really hard to be able to to stop it whereas the old car i'm sure hamlin probably could have saved that in the old car but with this new car it was just way too far gone and he wasn't able to to bring it back okay well we how about a shout out to wayne uh bilo wayne uh commented before the i think this was on our show because we did the we, we did the two we had a new format last week that i'm going to get into quickly but wayne said thanks a lot guys another great show i think hosevar is a great long shot he did and carson hosevar finished 10th <laughs> excellent call yeah hosevar has been good at this track in the in the truck series um i can't remember how much we talked about him I, i'm positive we brought him up um but uh yeah he he turned a lot of heads and, and well deserved he's a really great driver Hopefully uh, that success that he's had in the, the truck series, which wasn't as much, honestly, as I think he deserved. He got a little bit of success, got a race win, some other stuff, um, and definitely deserves to find his way in the cup. Uh, needs a little bit more experience, but I think he's got a, a heck of a lot of talent behind him. Yeah, I, I really did like, because uh, I think he got off to a pretty good start this year. Then it cooled off a little bit, and then he came back and had a good race here. So, yeah, that was uh, that was great to see. Um, also, I want to shout out to John DeRosa. Now, John's done a great job uh, as a viewer. Matter of fact, he's donated to our show before. And if you want to know what that means, well, I, I know I don't talk about it as much as I should, uh, but you can donate to the show. Uh, it's, uh, you just got to hit that uh, uh, icon there, and I should probably you know, do more of a, a better pitch uh, of explaining what to do, and I will uh, sometime uh, soon. Um, but uh, John has done a good job of donating a couple of bucks here and there to the show. Uh, it's the super thanks icon. By the way, uh, John last week, so he makes a suggestion. I get the I get the uh, the notice that someone's made a, a comment. It's John. Not a lot of shows post uh, their thoughts post qual and practice. I'm always looking for last minute bets on Sunday. So, you know, we've talked about us two joining together because we wanted to, the timing, the schedules. We just don't have the time. And it's like, let's just do this together. It'll help our schedules out. And so we, we did the first show. Okay, great. You know, everything's normal. Last week, we do the second show. I get this note. And then I'm just sitting there and I'm saying to myself, well, I, what really helped was, was that I was ahead of schedule with a lot of other things work I was doing. So if I was busy on Saturday, I never would have done this. But I had, you know, I was caught up. And I said, you know, all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and try it. I'll try uh, and post a video on Saturday after qualifying and uh, practice and just see what happens. So I did one of those. I think it, it took me about 15 minutes and we went over some of the things we're going to go over here as far as all the important uh, stats for qualifying and practice. And then looked at the pro qualifying and practice and talked about uh, those trends and kind of updated that. And that was it. And then, okay, now let's go. And, and I edited the portion of our show. Uh, we took out about 10 or 15 minutes of it and said, all right, now well, let's go and uh, check out the show that we did, uh, parts of the show that we did on Tuesday. And that was a whole video that we posted on Saturday right after qualifying and practice. Actually, I, did, I think that did not get posted. For, Saturday and Friday on YouTube is nightmarish trying to upload videos. It took like four hours to post this video. So it didn't even get on public uh, till about eight o'clock at night, seven o'clock at night on Saturday. I tried to get it posted by like four and it took like four hours. So it got up there at eight o'clock and sure enough, uh, we ended up with 415 views on that show, uh, which I wouldn't have even posted a show. So uh, that was awesome. And I had a couple hundred views on this show last week. So we had over 600 views. And I know to the you know to people who are making thousands of dollars a, a day or a week on YouTube, that's peanuts. But for us, uh, we're, we're trying to build something here. And I thought that was really cool. So I want to thank John for that because I never would have posted a video. And I said, I'll give it a try if we get viewers. I thought if I got 100 viewers, I was good. I was going to be, oh, I'll give it a 400. I was really happy. Now we'll see if that was just a one-week thing or not. But I hope, obviously, it's more than that. 
So thanks, John. He also commented uh, on the Mystery Caution uh, video. Love this format. Great content and show. Uh, so again, John, appreciate it. He's one of our top, if not the top. Uh, I think between John and Lana, I think they're our top viewers. Not that I'm trying to play favorites here, Wayne and everyone <laughs> and homie. Uh, but th there's a lot of guys out there that have really responded to us uh, over the past couple of years, and you know, we thanks uh, we thank you very much for uh, participating and helping us out. Because uh, if if this becomes something, it's it's all up because of John. So, all right, let's get going. Geico 500, Talladega, Super Speedway. We've had a lot of races there. 109. I looked at the recent trends. Not a whole lot to go on, so I try to, like a lot of these races, we're trying to zero in then on the last couple of years since the new car. So that's going to come into play a lot. By the way, since the new car, you had Chevy, Chevy, Chevy win, and then Blaney won last October to kind of end that streak. So if anybody was going to end the Chevy, Chevy, Chevy streak, it probably was going to be Ryan Blaney. Not only the way that he ended the season last season, but of course how good he is at Talladega. Uh, Ford has won 11 of 17, but Blaney's win was the first in the last five because of the Chevy dominance. Uh, little little run there. Toyota has only had two wins since 2014, but uh, they have had two in the last seven. Um, and, and then this is the other thing that we always need to talk about, including I'll update it on Saturday, and that is uh, post position, pole position. Nine of the last 10 winners started outside the top four rows. The only one that was different was Denny Hamlin when he won from the pole during that stretch. So if you do not qualify in the top four rows, do not worry. Matter of fact, that's probably a good thing if you are looking for a good driver and you want your odds uh, to be in your favor after qualifying and practice. Since the new car came around, the winners have started 19th, 16th, 17th, and 10th. 10th was Blaney. And there have been seven different race winners in the spring race. That's another thing that I want to talk about on some of these drivers. Very interesting, CJ, that some drivers have just done much better or much worse depending on the season, which race it was. And I can't think that's just a coincidence. No, it is interesting. And the same thing happens at Daytona, too. We've seen a lot of guys that have been able to come out and win races in the fall race or the summer race. So it used to be in July. Uh, but they have very little success of being able to find their way to the finish, let alone win in the February race in the Daytona 500. So I think a lot of it has to do with the weather. Uh, certainly from different times of year, you, you're going to have a hotter track the later you get the race in the season. Certainly in July in Florida, it becomes very hot and slippery. Some people are better at that versus when it's a little bit cooler. Uh, in February, I think Talladega is largely the same thing. Uh, it's also interesting, probably more interesting to me of spring versus fall is Talladega versus Daytona. I know they're different tracks, but effectively they're the same kind of racing. And, you know, you tend to see guys that are more successful at Talladega than those who are successful at Daytona. Like take a Brad Keselowski, for example, wins all the time at Talladega, but it isn't exactly high on the leaderboard in terms of wins at Daytona. That to me is a little bit more interesting than just the spring versus the fall race. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now. At, you got the favorites. Matter of fact, I'll just pop that up there so you could just see. Uh, you know, but before we, we get into it, let me just uh, quickly pop up the futures to this week. Uh, Denny and Byron and Larson, they're still the favorites. Uh, Bell is still in, eh, it's okay, position. Elliott now has moved into the top 10 there, or, or actually into the top six overall, top five overall at nine to one. It's still a pretty decent number for Elliott now that he's got the bugaboo out of the way. So I, I would think, uh, look, we, 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 we advise to take Elliott already because of the generous odds that you were getting. I still think you, uh, you can get him now uh, at a decent price at nine to one. Uh, Blaney is still a good 10 to one. And then you have some of these other bargains that are still where they are. Uh, we talked about some of these guys last week. So um, just, uh, yeah, I don't see any other major changes. Um, but I, I still think Elliott, even though he's at 9-1 to one now, if you haven't taken him and you just wanted to wait, well, I mean, I still think 9-1 is not bad. No, so. For Elliott, for sure. I, yeah. I think uh, he's the type of driver. He, he used to be winning all the time until he went on this long 
long dry streak. And I think uh, now having made that breakthrough, I would expect several more wins to come for him this season. All right. And then quickly here, you see the odds for the race. We're going to go over this right now. Byron, Blaney, Kozlowski are the co-favorites. Logano, Hamlin, and Elliott are right there. So you got six drivers uh, really as uh, kind of co-favorites, if you want to put it that way. And as always, because this is a, uh, uh, you know, a Talladega Daytona race, you're going to get more than enough drivers that odds wise are going to have a, you know, a shot at winning uh, a race. Okay. So Blaney, Byron, Kozlowski, we're sort of the three of them. Um, I, 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 I just can't take Kozlowski though, because even though that he's had a great run here with six wins, this is important to note in the new car, he only has one top 20. That was a fifth place finish. He's only led seven laps with the new car. So because he's a favorite, I, I can't take him. When I can take Blaine, Blaney and Byron at the same number, Blaney's a definite. You have to take him every time he's at Daytona Talladega. And Byron, you know, Byron, I usually do this with golfers because I think it's more luck with NASCAR drivers. But Byron has improved all four of his races, so he's trending in the right direction. He went from 15th to 12th to 7th and 2nd. So there's only one place to go, and that's first. If he continues on that path, he led 52 laps with the new car out of 108 all-time 12 races. That's eight before that. Um, so, yeah, I think Byron, Chevy and all that. Blaney, if I'm going with... Uh, and again, we'll talk about the other three coming up. But those are two that I'll probably get a zero win on. Blaney and Byron. Out of these three for me, Blaney is my top choice. Uh, Byron would be my second choice. And Keselowski would be my third. All three of them could easily win. <laughs> and it would not be a surprise one bit. Um, they would be my top choices overall. So justifiably the favorites. But if I have to choose an order, Blaney, Byron, then Keselowski. Logano is 11 to 1, as is Hamlin and Elliott. So, again, these are the top six. Now, the interesting thing is, is that I'm, pr I'm pretty much sticking with Blaney and Byron. Um, even with we're adding these three, Logano does have a great history here with the three wins. But with the new car, he has not registered a top 20. So, that's been... Now, he did lead 48 laps in the race in October... But uh, and, and that was from qualifying in the front row, but he ended 24th. And I, this is something I talk about a lot in these races. I believe a lot in, um, uh, if you want to call it trends or just, uh, or, or, or mojo, or uh, maybe even the, mo the, the best way is just, uh, you know, the, the pattern that you're in. I, I think there's, you can go up and you can go down and you could, whether it's confidence or not. And I think that when I, when I see these types of crazy races at Talladega and Daytona, I don't care how good of a driver you are, even Brian Blaney, if you go through a stretch of three, four, five races where it's just not working out and you're getting into wrecks and your, your average finish is bad, you, I just can't take those guys. I, I'd Get out of the slump, whatever you want to call it, then I'll look at you next time. But uh, when, when you're going hot or when you're going cold at these racetracks, I do think it's important. And that's why, that's how I usually bet these races. NASCAR is all about momentum. So that is very wise advice. I highly recommend following it as well. Um, you know, I really want to go with Logano at this point because he's shown speed of this group, I should say. He's shown speed all season. It's really just been bad luck that has kept him from winning. But exactly like you said, this is all about momentum and, and bad luck. Yeah, bad luck, and he's got bad luck. So, yeah. I do you think Logano could do extremely well? But like you, I, I think he's got to break out of the slump a little bit in order to be the top choice of the group. Hamlin, however, two top fives I think out of the last three that he's been here at Talladega. Uh, it's really hard to win races back to back from an Elliott point of view. Plus, Elliott, we still don't know, you know, how how on top of this new car he is. Uh, so of this group, probably Hamlin for me, Logano, and then Elliott probably third only by virtue of the fact that he won last week. Yeah, uh, Hamlin does have a couple of top fives, but here's the thing we talked about with the spring and the fall. In the last three spring races for Hamlin, 17th, 18th, and 32nd. It, when, we, when we come around in the fall, when you're with us in the fall, so make sure to subscribe. When you're with us, eight straight finishes in the top seven, okay, including a win. So he's much better 
for whatever reason, in the fall at Talladega. So that's why I'm going to pass on him. And I would probably go with Elliott. But again, coming off the win, like you said, it's so difficult to win back-to-back, -back, especially when you haven't done it in a while. But he's been pretty good with the new car, 12th or better at all four races, including a win. So that's why I would take Elliott out of that three. But I'm not going to. Out of those six, I'm going to go with Blaney and Byron. Yeah, I agree. Blaney and Byron out of the, the six, if I'm forced to choose. The other thing about Logano that's interesting, you know, uh, you mentioned Hamlin spring and fall. Logano is the same from a Talladega Daytona perspective. Yeah, Logano's had some success at, at Talladega, but I think he's been more successful at Daytona. He tends to be higher up there more frequently. Uh, but the Penske cars, Logano uh, and, you know, he and Keselowski have a habit of ho hooking up, whether they're both at Penske or, or Keselowski's moved on to rfk so i wouldn't be surprised to see those two hooked up but out of those six yeah i, I can't disagree with you blaney and byron top choices all right and then we've got uh kyle bush bubba wallace ross chastain and christopher bell between 15 and 16 to 1 and out of that out of those four i'm this gonna go what's that this one this one's really easy oh well okay I, yeah <laughs> i i think you're yeah it is uh but the one that makes it really easy is the one that's not exactly in a good run right now if we're talking about the same driver <laughs> but uh if you look at kyle bush um he if you look at it before the in the new car he has two top fives and a win uh he led just three laps in that win but he's got a win um it before the new car he had nine straight finishes outside the top five uh, so the new car has been good for Kyle Busch at this track, and we know how good Kyle Busch can be on these types of races. Wallace, um, I would take out of these four, because not just because he's got a win, and look, he's only he, he hasn't had a top 15 in four races with the new car, but he has led 53 laps. He does have a win here, and he usually does well, but then it seems like, you know, whether it's impatience or whatever it is, he kind of gets into a, a trouble. Christopher Bell... Uh, has just one top five out of eight. And Ross Chastain, now, he does have a win in the top five, but that was 2022. I still find it kind of really weird about how good Chastain was and Suarez in 2022 and how bad they were in 2023. I just, it just I don't understand. I still can't figure that out. But keep in mind, when Chastain won that race uh, in 2022, he led one lap. So it's not like Chastain... Uh, has a whole lot of a great history here. He's probably similar to Wallace regarding his history. But out of that four, uh, I would take Kyle Busch. And if I was taking a second driver, I'd probably take Wallace. What about you? My first choice is actually Wallace. Um, I, I think Wallace, the reason I wouldn't go with Kyle Busch is he's had such horrendous luck this season. Yep. I, we talked about it last week. Almost everything is going wrong with, with Richard Childress Racing. However, Austin Dillon last week, crack the top 10 his best finish so far hey. so when when we get to austin dillon when we get down into these long shots he's definitely got to be on your list well so kyle, did kyle though well yeah that's true kyle he was a little bit behind dylan dylan finished ahead of, of bush last week well the so. funny thing is is a lot of these drivers that finished the way they did last week would have been a lot further back if it wasn't for all those late cautions so, yeah totally without question yeah uh, so certainly from this group, I, I think it's, um, you know, Bubba Wallace, in my opinion, aside from Hamlin, might be the only Toyota that's actually capable of winning this race this weekend. I think it's likely going to be a Chevrolet or a Ford. Uh, if you're going to go with a Toyota driver, I think Wallace and Hamlin are probably your two best bets. Okay. And then uh, we go next. We've got Gibbs at 18, Busher at 19, Larson at 20. And I don't, I'm not taking any of these guys. Um, if you look at it, Gibbs doesn't have much of a history here at all in both Xfinity or Cup. Matter of fact, he hasn't finished a race in the Cup. Busher has one top five in his career. We've talked repeatedly about Kyle Larson and how bad he is at Daytona and Talladega. Now he's getting the odds he should get here. It was crazy what, how much respect they were giving him with the odds at Daytona earlier. Um, maybe they've learned their lesson. Um, so, yeah, out of those three, I'm just a hard pass on all three of them. Yeah, I mean, if I had to choose one of them, it would be Busher only because of the fact that teammates Keselowski and teammates have a tendency to hook up, so maybe they get together and can push each other to the top. Uh, but aside from that, I agree. I think Gibbs is, uh, 
he hasn't finished like you said larson not great on restrictor plate tracks even though it's not a restrictor plate anymore it's super speedway but still same type of racing and then um uh yeah larson he, 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 larson's getting the the odds that he deserves like you said uh but still i i don't know i'd rather go with bowman who's on the screen now versus larson yeah because larson uh i don't i don't have it right here but i'm pretty sure if you look at it um he, he has one top five here he probably has one top five at daytona so he, he's done nothing at these tracks then you have reddick bowman and truex all at 22 to 1 and reddick does have an xfinity win here in 2019 a couple top tens but in a new car no top 15s uh, Bowman has an average of 23.9 in 16 races, which is one top five. And Truex is another one that is not good on these racetracks, even though he's been better lately. He's got three top fives out of 38. So, but I agree with you. Out of these three, I would uh, I would go with Bowman because he's in a Chevy and he's been known to steal races before. Bowman, hands down, would be the top choice of this group. Reddick, probably a distant second. Truex is just remarkable how bad he is at, at these tracks. Uh, just one top finish in the top 10, all, dating all the way back to 2016. Uh, and that was a fifth place finish in the spring race of 2022. Every other time his best finish since then has been 12th, and most of the time he's been outside of the top 20. Just remarkably bad, which is actually surprising for somebody of Truex's caliber. All right, and then we've got Stenhouse at 28, Jones, Dylan, and Sindrick at 30. So this is actually where we can start to yeah, exactly. maybe make some money here if we're lucky, the lucky drivers. Now, Stenhouse, even though he has a good history here with six top fives out of 21 and a 17 win, 2017 win, with the new car, he does not have a top 10. Uh, keep that in mind, but he is still dangerous uh, at the at these uh, at these tracks, but the the uh, real interesting one, um, and I think you'll agree with me. Now Dylan's in this group, so you talked about that, and and by the way, he was runner up in 2022 here in the first race with the new car. Um, Sindrick has uh, four Cup races, but in the spring, no good. Fall, good. So when we're in the fall with Sindrick, we'll let you know. But Jones is without a doubt. The must play here, thirty to one. We liked him last week, and he let us down. But you just got to keep taking a, a driver sometimes, especially the long shots. And one week they'll put it together. In the new car, he's got three sixth place finishes, and a twenty sixth. So um, he also has six top tens in the last eight at Talladega, with two top fives and a runner up. Yeah, and I don't know that he necessarily let us down. I think he showed speed last week, but then just didn't have the circumstances with all the cautions to be able to stay up there, unfortunately. But yeah, I think I already said I'd be taking Dylan, uh, made it into the top 10 so last week. So hopefully that ends his string of bad luck. We know how good Richard Childress racing is on super speedways, and we know how good Austin Dillon is on super speedways. So I, I think he, you got to take him this week, but you're right. <clears throat> Jones, ninth, sixth, 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 and then 26th. And even though he finished 26th uh, in the fall race uh, last year, he still led four laps. He led laps in four all of the last four races, and in fact, six of the last seven at Talladega. So Jones is consistently at the front at this track and finishing in the top 10. And everybody knows all you got to do is be within striking distance at the end to win here at a place like Talladega. Okay, and Stenhouse, what a bad season he's having. Oh, yeah. I mean. oh, you, norm, normally, he would be one that you maybe you definitely want to consider on a super speedway because that's where he's made his name and he's notoriously aggressive. Often that gets him into trouble. But this year, he just, he hasn't even shown a flicker of of competitiveness, and that team just took a giant step backward this year. I mean, really disappointing for him. But yeah, I, I'm going to avoid Stenhouse this weekend. Actually, his best race happened to be surprise Atlanta. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but again, you know, it, you can go a lot worse than Stenhouse if you're looking for a long shot. Uh, and then we've got Suarez at 35, McDowell at 40, Gregson and Briscoe at 45. And again, more good long shots. Uh, I, I would go with Suarez, McDowell, and Briscoe, and, and Gregson maybe too. I mean, these are all four good long shots. Suarez has three straight top tens here. Uh, McDowell 
uh, has four top tens in the last nine, including one top five in the last, I believe, three races. Uh, Gregson's got a 2022 Xfinity Series win, and he was dominant here in Talladega in the Xfinity Series. So he knows this racetrack. And uh, Briscoe, uh, he has two top tens and a top five in his last four with the new car. And a matter of fact, if you wipe out a crash he had, his last three races are all in the top 15 at Talladega. So, yeah, I think I, I think all four of these are very interesting long shots. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think uh, Suarez certainly tops that list for me. If I'm looking at anybody else, uh, Briscoe certainly high up there, maybe even equivalent with Suarez if I need to go below that, though. McDowell's been better at Daytona more so than Talladega. Noah Gragson, though, um, I think if there is a place where Noah Gragson can really outperform expectations, it's a place like Talladega, and it's going to be this weekend. Um, he's, he was so good at these tracks, and specifically on Talladega and the Xfinity Series for those who paid attention. I mean, he was good on every track in the Xfinity Series. He just doesn't have the equipment and the experience here in the Cup Series. So I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, this type of track, Talladega especially, is, is an equalizer of equipment, and somebody like Noah Gregson, who knows how to get it done, I think could be a surprise shot. So, yeah, I, I guess long story short, I agree with all of them. <laughs> in the eight career races in the Xfinity Series, uh, Gregson has six top tens, three top fives, and a, and a win. So, yeah, uh, he knows. Maybe, yeah, your host of our from last week is probably Gregson this week. Okay. Next up, uh, we have uh, Todd Gilliland at 50 to 1, Corey LaJoy at 50 to 1, and Ryan Priest at 55 to 1. And Gilliland and LaJoy are another uh, couple of wacky long shots. I mean, Gilliland, if you wipe out his 27th place finish with the new car, the other three races, he's averaged 14th. Actually, he's averaged 14th with the new car uh, because in the last three races, he's finished 7th, 10th, and 12th at Talladega. Briscoe, uh, LaJoy's coming off a of fourth last October, and we know how dangerous he could be at these types of tracks. Uh, Priest was eighth last October, but I'm still not seeing it from Priest. So I think LaJoy and Gilliland, now we're getting to a little, now we've got a, enough long shots already, but I, I still think if you just want to litter your board with long shots, I think Gilliland and LaJoy should probably be in there too. Yeah, I would throw them equally in the hopper. Um, Gilliland ha has done pretty consistently well at super speedways regardless of whether you're at talladega or daytona he seems to almost always be in that top 15 maybe even the top 10 and often in the top five lajoy i don't know what it is but he finds a way to get to the finish he avoids he, he's so successful at avoiding these big crashes at daytona and talladega and he was better at doing that at daytona for a long time but like you said last fall it's like he finally figured it out at talladega too and I, I remember explicitly not choosing him in that race because I felt like he wasn't getting it done at Talladega, whereas he was more successful at Daytona. And then I kicked myself when he finished fourth. So I think LaJoy, if you're going to litter some some dollar bets uh, across the board, LaJoy's and Gill, Gilliland are two you have to take. Uh, Zane Smith at 70, Barry, Hunter Nemechek, Hosevar at 70. Out of that group... Um, let me see. Here you go. At, out of that group, I probably uh, – well, you know what? Just based on uh, Mojo, I'd probably take Hosevar. Uh, but, yeah, because I'm not really seeing anything that says that these long shots should be ones that uh, I would take this week. Yeah, I agree. Probably for me, maybe just because of the team he was in and the car he might potentially have, Josh Berry. Uh, but Zane Smith, uh, Nemechek, Hosevar – all very successful drivers, but like you said, the, the mojo is not with them at the moment. And then, to, and then to wrap it up, you've got uh, Haley at 80 um, as the one that probably sticks out, of course, because he has the two Xfinity Series wins at Talladega. He was sixth last October here, um, and, and that's probably it. I mean, Hemrick does have a top five in four cup races at Talladega. But, yeah, ha ha Haley would be one that I'd throw in there because that's impressive having two Xfinity Series wins on this track. Yeah, and he's also pretty good at super speedways. Again, more so at uh, Daytona. He's got a three there that, due to the rain race, um, but he has a history of racing pretty well at these tracks. Uh, so Haley, I think, um, odd that he's behind the group that we just talked yeah. about. Okay, picks. So 
Who would be your top three? Uh, so top three are Byron, Keselowski, and Hamlin. Oh, so you're going with those top three, the, the, the three 10 to one shots. You got it. In that order? Yeah. Still, yeah, Byron, Kozlowski, and Blaney. I had to think about that for a second. I thought, yeah, the, that, I thought the screen froze. <laughs> was like, you there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Byron, Kozlowski, Blaney. Okay. Uh, I would go Blaney, Byron, and Kyle Busch. Those would Actually, be no, my top what? three. Put Blaney at the top. Yeah. Okay. Blaney, Byron, Kozlowski. And then I think we I both would have Wallace. I didn't think about it long enough. I, I should have thought longer to put Blaney up top. Yeah, Wallace, <laughs> Wallace would be my mid shot. Yeah. And then long shots, we both like Jones. Jones, and I'm going to throw Dylan in that list as well. And I'll throw Briscoe as my top, uh, part of my top two. Okay, so that's Talladega. And again, I'll be back on Saturday for any NASCAR fans out there, uh, just NASCAR fans. Uh, before we talk F1 here for a couple of minutes, I'll be back on Saturday post-qualifying and practice. And uh, depending on how long it takes to upload on YouTube, uh, we'll, we'll get that up there as soon as possible. All right. Now, let's talk some F1. And, uh, boy, there's always so many options to choose from uh, with the <laughs> F1 races. So let me see what's how, going on. How negative is Verstappen this week? <laughs> so let's see here. Let's take a look at the F1 futures first. Uh, uh, let's see. What do we got? Oh, well, 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 yeah. They're showing me that. Why are they showing that they, they, don't, they don't have the drivers? Probably because they don't want to show the drivers. It's just they don't want anybody to bet on uh, Max Verstappen anymore. So, uh, yeah. So that's all they had well, was just the. Uh, his is going to be only slightly worse than Red Bull's there. It's so negative 35 there. <laughs> 35! <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? I think at this point, when you go to the the, the window at at Vegas, the, the guy just shuts the, the the window and goes, "I'm taking a break." When he hears the when he hear, when he sees that you're about to put money down on Max Verstappen to win the championship, so can you imagine what a collapse it would be? I, and then granted, I know how early it is in the season, but can you imagine what a collapse it would be to have somebody other than Red Bull win? <laughs> How, that would be like a casino's nightmare. <laughs> well, what would you do? Because Ferrari is the obvious choice, and then McLaren is getting a little love. So would it be obviously Ferrari, or would you put McLaren? Who would you do if you yeah, were just banking if, on a miracle? If you're banking on a miracle, um, it, it's got to be Ferrari. Okay. And, like, the factory would have to burn down for Red Bull at this point. <laughs> I think it's going to take a natural disaster uh, because the car is just so much better than maybe it takes an injury, you know, and I, I hate to say that, but maybe it can happen and it has it can. happened. So very easily, I mean, that can change. And, uh, you know, signs, quite honestly, has had the measure of Sergio Perez uh, for the most part. So uh, it'd be a still be a tight battle if for whatever reason Verstappen decided to go on a long vacation or whatever it might be between Perez and Sainz and maybe Leclerc uh, but Ferrari is the heir apparent if for whatever reason the Red Bull racing factory breaks off and falls into the sea and sinks to the bottom of the ocean alright so uh, let's now talk about the race coming up uh, and uh, look we uh, we, we know the who's in first, but at least it's not 3,500. So Verstappen is at 450. Boy, when you take a look at uh, Verstappen now, after looking at that 3,500, you go, oh, that's not bad. That's interesting. <laughs> Minus 450. Okay. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, they got Perez, Leclerc, uh, Sainz. Those are the only other ones that looks like realistic shots there, th those top four, as usual. Yeah, and I think that's right. I think the podium um similar to what we've experienced for the majority of the season so far it's going to be max verstappen and sergio perez uh there is this is a sprint race weekend so the format is going to be a little bit different than we've seen up till this point this what does that mean end of the season uh so they have a short sprint race on saturday 
um, that is, it's four points. Um, it's a, it's no pit stops. It's just, I think it's a hundred kilometers if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, so very short, just, you know, designed to draw fans and more fans to the track on Saturdays versus everybody trying to pile in on Sunday. Whereas if you normally come on a Saturday, you'd just be watching practice and qualifying. So <clears throat> well, how many points do you normally get? You get like half the points, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of a, a normal race. Uh, oh, okay. So points if you end up yeah. winning, some, something like that. Um, but I, I mean, they're 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 a novelty. I'm, I've never really been a big fan. However, I do like the fact that they changed the the format, the the schedule of the weekend starting this season. And again, China is going to be the first sprint race of this season, so we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but last year, they had to practice and qualify for Sunday's race on Friday. For those sprint race weekends so you could have massive weather changes you could have massive track changes across the weekend and you're stuck with whatever you put on the car on friday because you enter park for May conditions and you can't do the changes that you need so you get you qualified on friday you race the sprint race you learned a whole ton of stuff that you could not apply to your car on sunday so it was kind of like a waste whereas now this year uh, you're actually going to qualify. You're going to practice and qualify on Friday for the sprint race. You'll have the sprint race Saturday morning. You'll qualify for Sunday's race after the sprint race on Saturday, which means anything you learned from the sprint race, you can apply to your car to be able to have it ready to go for the race on Sunday. Oh, goody. The more information, I, the better for the best teams. That's good. Well, yeah. All right, you just you just popped my bubble because I was you know I was taking the optimistic side that if people learn something they might be able to actually have a bigger swing at, at it on Sunday. But you're you're exactly right because Red Bull's going to be learning too and they're going to make the adjustments and they're going to come out even further ahead. Well, so, anything's possible. I mean, no. it just it, it does need to have a, a new any wrinkle that you add to the to, to this uh, series on a weekly basis or on a on a race to race basis is is good. It should be good. It is, yeah, and this is, it's a change. So, you know, there's, whenever there's a change, it, it always takes teams and drivers a little bit to settle into it. So if there's a chance of anything, uh, un uh, you know, unexpected happening, it's probably gonna happen this weekend. That coupled with the fact that this is the first time that they've been back to China uh, since 2019. Wow. So they've been on for a long time. Uh, it's virtually a new track, even though a lot of the drivers have experience at it. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. There is supposed to be a chance of rain during the one practice session that they have before they get going from a qualifying and race standpoint for both the sprint and Sunday's race. So that could throw a wrench into the mix as well. Uh, but I think largely speaking, aside from the novelty of seeing how this uh, format and how the sprint actually plays out with the change and where they place qualifying for Sunday, I do still think on Sunday it's going to be a Max Verstappen and Red Bull racing show yet again. Okay, and then because uh, they have the top six finish, so can you make any money with any of these drivers down here that are in the pluses, starting with Alonso? Like, can, can would you risk anything that any of these drivers here could finish in the top six? Absolutely, Alonzo. I mean, he should be finishing in the top six. He's certainly got the pace. Uh, Lance Stroll teammate has not had the, the luck and the momentum that uh, Alonzo has been having. Alonzo's just been getting more out of the car, which his odds reflect that. Uh, so I think Alonzo certainly on this list is one that I would be taking. I think Ricardo, uh, you know, he showed it again. It kind of wasn't, I don't know if it was his fault or if it was a racing incident, but he was out early in Japan. Um, I think Haas has been stepping up. Um, Williams, you've got a discount. Um, do you see a Zhu on there? There you go, Guan Yu Zhu. So he is one, um, this is his home race. So okay. he's, this could be one, and he actually has had some decent results so far this season. Uh, I think it's a long shot to think that he might get into the top six, maybe top 10 is, is a potential for him. Hey, it's China. Uh, Maybe they'll uh, find a way to get him in the top six. Exactly right. But if you're going to look behind those that are in the negative on the finishing in the top six, I think Alonzo's your your must choose. Uh, okay. Beyond um, beyond that, maybe maybe an Alex Albon if if Williams can actually get, if if his Williams can actually get him to the finish. Well, look, you're trying to find anything in F1 to make money off of, and maybe that's the best 
wager going would be to take Alonso to finish in the top six at yeah, two to one. Exactly right. I think if, uh, you know, aside from Verstappen winning, which is a virtual sure thing, I, I would think Alonso coming in top six with a plus 200 is a, is a pretty good bet for Formula One right now. And uh, who's who, who's in second then? Is it Perez. between, oh, definitely Perez? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as Perez doesn't make a mistake, Red Bull's just got the upper hand. Um, Mercedes is well off the pace. Uh, they're having temperature problems. They can't get the tires to work depending upon, I think it's the higher temperature. Uh, so I don't know exactly what the temperature is supposed to be in China. If it's going to be a cooler weekend, maybe Hamilton and Russell will be further up the order. Uh, but regardless, I still think Ferrari's got the edge. Um, so clear pecking order is Verstappen, Perez, uh, and then probably signs out of the Ferrari stable at this point. And uh, so did, did you say you already saw the weather? You said it's going to rain? Potential for rain during the practice on Friday. Okay. And did we, let me see. And you said it's going to possibly rain over the weekend at Talladega. Uh, relatively high chance of showers Sunday at Talladega. Yeah, it's what it says here. It says rainfall around half an inch on Sunday. 80% chance as you said. So it looks like no racing on Sunday. If it, if it, that holds, it's looking like we're going to have a Monday race uh, for NASCAR this week. So whatever. Alright. So that's going to wrap it up. And what's uh, Dover's next, right, for NASCAR? Yes, exciting Dover, concrete mile. And then after that for uh, F1, what are we looking for at F1 in May? In May, we actually come to Miami. So first, uh, the North American stops first weekend in May, uh, Miami. So you'll have to compete uh, with qualifying on Saturday for the Miami Grand Prix with the Kentucky Derby. Oh, okay. Well, that's always special. That's it. <laughs> We're going to race once. Is it once or twice they race in America? Twice. They've got Miami and, well, Las Vegas now, three. Oh, three. So okay. Miami, uh, Circuit of the Americas, and Las Vegas. All right. So, yeah, they're going to figure out another way to come to Miami. <laughs> That's not every year, is it? N Miami has been, this will be, what, the third, maybe the fourth time they've had it? Third or fourth time. The same weekend as the Derby? It. It's usually an early race. I don't know that okay. it's ever. Completed. So it's a morning. It's a, what, what time do they start? Uh, it'll be the afternoon. Derby is later. Yeah, so Derby is 6. So yeah. 630. Yeah, so Formula One will be done by then. All right. And uh, all right. Sounds good. So uh, and that's in how many weeks? Miami, two weeks or next week? Uh, Miami is two weeks. Two weeks. So another week off and then we go to Miami. OK, so next week it's all NASCAR. We'll talk Dover wrap up uh what happened uh, of course here at talladega and uh that's about it so rotowire.com will have a link in the description uh you will have your uh, nascar report and f1 reports available when they'll be up uh probably friday this week okay so check that out again a link will be in the description as soon well i'll always put a link in the description to your page your main page so just check that out of course on friday and, uh, you know, if you can remember, just send me the updated ones since I'm going to be posting the videos on Saturday. Will do. Not yeah. a problem. So anyway, that's it. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Let us know what's on your mind. If you have any questions or comments and all that good stuff, don't forget to subscribe. We've got to get those subscriptions up on Mystery Caution. And we'll see you guys, well, even though this is Prime Sports Network for now. But uh, depending on how I edit this out, it might also be Mystery Caution. So uh, <laughs> either way. To subscribe to both channels and uh, we'll see you guys next week.